Welcome back to Great SpaceX. It's been a long time since we've done a highlight on exciting news and developments taking place at Starbase, so we've got a lot of topics in today's episode. First, we've got the latest updates regarding the FAA's delay. Along with that, there are amazing pieces of information related to the Polaris program funded by Jared Isaacman to test new SpaceX technologies aboard Dragon missions and Starship's first crewed spaceflight. In addition, we're also providing the assembly progress of the Starship's next prototypes as well as the first liquid methane tank to the orbital tank farm. So, without any further delays, let's get started on today's episode. SpaceX aims to launch the milestone test mission shortly after the FAA wraps up an environmental assessment of Starbase. And now, that mission has been pushed back by at least another month as the FAA announced on February 14th that the final report has been delayed again this time to March 28th, to allow yet more time for comment review and interagency consultation. The timeline shift probably doesn't come as a shock to SpaceX or Elon Musk. During a live-streamed Starship update last week, Musk said the company has gotten sort of a rough indication that an FAA approval may be coming in March. An approval isn't the only possible outcome, of course. The FAA could decide that an environmental impact statement, a more in-depth and time-consuming review, is needed for the activities at Starbase. If that ends up being the case, then the first Starship orbital test flight would likely take place from Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, or KSC, at Florida's Cape Canaveral. As Musk said, though, it still needs to build a launch and catch tower for the vehicle there. Aside from that, SpaceX also has a lot of backup options as it aims to launch Starship from multiple locations. The company is also modifying two deep-sea oil rigs to serve as launch towers for the giant vehicle. The FAA's delay announcement came on the same day as other big SpaceX and Starship news. Billionaire Jared Isaacman announced today that he has booked three space flights with the company, including one that will be the first ever crewed Starship mission. Isaacman is a repeat customer for SpaceX. He booked and commanded Inspiration4, the first ever all-civilian mission. He lived out an incredible adventure when he launched atop Falcon 9 aboard Crew Dragon Resilience and orbited around the Earth for three days in September of 2021. The Inspiration4 mission crew members used their newfound fame to raise funds for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and raised over $200 million through their inspiring spaceflight. And the trio of new missions will also be dedicated to fundraising the Children's Hospital and serve to test new spaceflight technologies. The first two Polaris program missions will be launched by Falcon 9 and deploy Dragon into a higher altitude than any human has traveled to since NASA's Apollo lunar missions. Mission 1 is called Polaris Dawn. It will launch Isaacman alongside retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Scott Kidd Poteet. SpaceX Lead Space Operations Engineer Sarah Gillis and SpaceX Lead Space Operations Engineer Anna Menon. Isaacman said in a press release that they will endeavor to achieve the highest Earth orbit ever flown in addition to conducting the world's first commercial spacewalk and testing of Starlink laser-based communication. Alongside these important objectives, they also will be supporting scientific research to advance both human health interests on Earth and our understanding of human health during future long-duration spaceflights. Notably, the Polaris Dawn mission will be important for SpaceX's human spaceflight objectives because the crew will test new SpaceX spacesuits designed for extravehicular activity, or EVA. They plan to conduct a spacewalk at around 500 kilometers above the Earth. The data they collect during the EVA will help SpaceX improve the spacesuit development for future long-duration missions to the Moon and Mars aboard Starship. However, information about Mission 2 is rather limited. The website says that building upon Polaris Dawn, this mission will continue to expand the boundaries of future human spaceflight missions in space communications and scientific research. The information on this third mission is also rather limited but at least gives a lot more room for speculation. This will be the first human spaceflight on Starship, the world's first fully reusable transportation system designed to carry both crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. No crew has been listed for this mission or Mission 2. Hopefully, more information will be provided in that regard once Starship is closer to operational status. And although February 14th was indeed Valentine's Day, I'm pretty sure SpaceX took the spotlight for most of us. Because 
On that same day, Elon shared a de-stacking Starship video via Twitter. After just 13 months of design and construction, the Mechazilla launch tower finally lifted Ship 20 onto Booster 4, completing Starship's second full stack since last August. This is also the first time that SpaceX has done this entire stacking process with the powerful chopstick arms. The duo is expected to fly Starship's first orbital flight. However, with what is happening right Right now, it's unlikely. It's likely that SpaceX will replace them with more advanced prototypes when it has too many feasible options. Thanks to the FAA delay, SpaceX more or less has more time to perfect the next prototypes, reluctantly. S-21 was scrapped just like our previous judgments. Ship 22 recently has been quickly stacked with Ship 21's nose cone. Even Ship 25's sections have started appearing. Ship 25's forward dome was spotted out in the dome yard just a few hours ago. And if the FAA continues to delay like this, it is likely that Starship's first orbital flight will proceed with its newly updated design in December last year. This ship will have 42 Raptor engines, 9 for Starship, and 33 for Super Heavy. And almost five months after beginning the process of, of filling and testing the first custom-built propellant storage system for Starship, SpaceX has finally begun to fuel half of the tank farm. It began with three truckloads on the very first day, February 13th, which means that SpaceX has fixed the issues that violate rudimentary Texas regulations for the storage of liquid natural gas and methane before. To fill the two existing tanks, which may store enough methane to fuel a stacked Starship and Super Heavy about four-fifths of the way, SpaceX will need around 40 to 50 more tanker deliveries. Since last November, SpaceX has completed more than 320 liquid nitrogen and 200 liquid oxygen deliveries, equivalent to about 6,700 tons of liquid nitrogen and 4,200 tons of liquid oxygen. If SpaceX maintains that average and focuses entirely on liquid methane, the two horizontal tanks could be filled to the brim before the end of February. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you thought about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. So if you enjoyed it as much as I did today, then give us a thumbs up. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Ship 25's forward dome was spotted out in the dome yard just a few hours ago. Well, it certainly wasn't at the nose cone yard, I can tell you that much. <laughs>